Hey everyone, it's Sarah with RegisterNurseRN.com and in this review we're going to talk about gestational diabetes. And as always, whenever you get done watching this YouTube video, you can access the free quiz that will test you on this content. So let's get started. Gestational diabetes is a type or form of diabetes that occurs during pregnancy. Now it tends to occur during the second or third trimester. Now, why does a woman develop diabetes during her pregnancy? Well, to help us understand this, we need to lay out the risk factors for why a woman may be at risk for developing gestational diabetes. And to help us remember those risk factors, because you wanna remember those risk factors for exams, we're gonna remember the word mama, because we're talking about risk factors for mama. So M is for maternal age over 25. O is for overweight or obese. And we're talking about a BMI, a body mass index. So being overweight, it would be greater than 25. And obese, it would be greater than 30. M for macrosomia. And we're talking about a large baby for its gestational age. And what we're looking for here is if she has previously had a baby that was larger than nine pounds. Then the other M is for multiple pregnancies, and then A for a history. Specifically, we're looking for a previous diagnosis of gestational diabetes in the past or a family history of diabetes. Now let's talk about the pathophysiology of gestational diabetes and why it is occurring. So to help us understand why it's occurring, let's remember three key players. The first key player is the pregnancy itself, specifically the hormones that are being produced to help support that pregnancy and that baby's growth. The second key player is mom's body, specifically the changes that are occurring to her metabolic system. Because that first key player, those hormones are going to influence that metabolic system and make her less sensitive to the insulin. So we're going to have low insulin sensitivity. And then the third key player is the baby. We're talking really about the baby's growth because at different stages, this baby is going to require different nutrients. So all three of these things together is really going to create this perfect storm for gestational diabetes to develop. So what is diabetes? Well, there are different types or forms of diabetes. However, in a nutshell, what's occurring with someone who has diabetes is there is an issue with insulin. Now, insulin is produced by the pancreas, specifically by the beta cells. And what insulin is, is it's a hormone that influences the cell's receptiveness to glucose. So you eat foods broken down into glucose, it hangs out in your blood. Well, that glucose wants to get into your cells because your cells need glucose for energy. So insulin will influence those cells to take in that glucose so you can use it. However, some people have issues with insulin. People who have type one diabetes, this is like an autoimmune condition, there is an issue with these beta cells not working. They're either destroyed or they're just not there. So no insulin is being secreted. You have glucose hanging out in the blood causing hyperglycemia and those cells aren't getting their glucose. So the person has to take insulin artificially through injections. Then we have type two diabetes, and this is an insulin resistant issue. The cells just really aren't receptive to that insulin, so they don't take in the glucose, and the glucose stays in the blood, causing hyperglycemia. Then we have gestational diabetes, and this is very similar to type two diabetes. There's an insulin resistance issue, and it occurs during pregnancy, during that second to third trimester. However, it tends to disappear after birth, once that baby has left mama's body. But an interesting statistic by cdc.gov is that women who have gestational diabetes, about 50% of them will actually go on to develop type two diabetes. So that is a very alarming statistic that half of those women who have gestational diabetes will end up developing type two diabetes later on. So as a nurse, we wanna be sure that we're educating our patient about this, that they're getting tested postpartum after they have their baby. And then later on, like one to three years to see 
and check that glucose level. So now let's talk a little bit more about insulin. So we've already established that this is a hormone produced by the pancreas's beta cells and insulin influences cells to take in glucose so they can use it for energy. Now during pregnancy, there are so many changes that's occurring in mom's body. One change is to the metabolic system. And one thing that's gonna be affected is insulin, specifically insulin sensitivity. So how receptive those cells are to take in glucose. And it's actually beneficial to mom and baby, but it can go wrong and that's where we get gestational diabetes. So. During the beginning of pregnancy, early pregnancy, we have a high insulin sensitivity, meaning those cells are being influenced by insulin and they're readily taking in the glucose from mom's blood. Now this is beneficial because the body knows that, hey, we're carrying a baby, so we need to have growth on our adipose tissue to support mom and baby. So the glucose goes into those cells, helps with the growth of adipose tissue. Now, mama will probably have some side effects of this high insulin sensitivity because what can happen to her is she has those blood sugar shifts where she feels really nausea, weak, tired, the hypoglycemia from where glucose is leaving her blood and going into the cells. Now, as the pregnancy progresses, baby's growing bigger. They need more nutrients. Specifically, they need some glucose to help them with their energy. Their demands for glucose really increase, especially during that second to third trimester. So the body knows this, the placenta is very smart. So what it does is it is going to lower insulin sensitivity, meaning those cells aren't gonna be as receptive to the insulin, so they're not gonna readily take in glucose as much more glucose is going to stay in mom's blood. If more glucose is staying in mom's blood, that means some more of it can go to baby. Now, why this is occurring is due to these hormones being produced. One hormone that's being produced is human placental lactogen. This is majorly gonna influence insulin sensitivity. It's gonna lower it. Also, estrogen, cortisol, and progesterone play a role with that as well. So normally mom's body is gonna be able to compensate for this low insulin sensitivity because when we have this, we have more glucose staying in her blood, which can increase her blood glucose level, which could potentially cause hyperglycemia. But in moms who don't get gestational diabetes, her metabolic system is compensating because it wants to maintain euglycemia, normal glucose levels, about 70 to 130 milligrams per deciliter. Doesn't want her getting any higher because it can be detrimental to her and the baby. So what it does is it increases the size and number of those beta cells so we can have those normal glucose levels. However, patients who develop gestational diabetes, they're having insulin resistance. This compensatory thing that's going on up here really isn't occurring with them. So more glucose is staying in their blood. They're gonna have hyperglycemia. Now this is gonna to lead to some issues. So we have more glucose in our blood. When our, our kidneys, because our kidneys filter our blood, this extra glucose in the blood is going to drip down through Bowman's capsule, enter in those tubules, hence go into the urine. So we're gonna have glucose in our urine. Now this can cause issues because bacteria love glucose, so does yeast, the woman's more at risk for urinary tract infections and yeast infections. So that is why whenever a woman goes to her prenatal visits, they're always having to pee in a cup and they're checking it for glucose to make sure this isn't occurring. Now also, these high glucose levels are gonna be hard on the cardiovascular system because as we learned in our diabetic videos that um, sugar, I think of sugar being hard, that it's gonna harden those vessels in her system. So that can lead to hypertension, which can cause preeclampsia, and we get protein in the urine where protein's gonna leak in that urine. That can also cause preterm labor, so having issues with that. Also, as we talked about earlier, that increases her chances of developing type two diabetes whenever they get gestational diabetes. And because we have more glucose in her blood, that's gonna cause more glucose to go to this baby. And um, that can increase the baby's size. So it increases her risk of having a cesarean section. So let's talk about baby. 
So baby is getting all this extra glucose. So they make more insulin to deal with this glucose, but they're also gonna increase in their size because they're gonna start putting on more fat and that can cause problems. And we call a large baby for their gestational age, we call that macrosomia. So the baby is larger. Now, also what can happen is that we can have some issues at birth. So once the baby is born, they're no longer going to be receiving all the extra glucose for mom, but they built up insulin to deal with that. So once we sever the cord, what happens is that they're cut off from their glucose supply, but they have this insulin here, so they can have hypoglycemia at birth where they have a low blood sugar. So definitely wanna monitor baby's blood glucose level very closely, and a lot of times they will have to have some type of glucose solution to help keep them within normal range and this doesn't occur. Another thing that can happen with these babies is because they've been in this receiving all this extra glucose, that can affect their lung maturity, specifically that surfactant. So they're at risk for respiratory distress at birth. So what are some signs and symptoms of gestational diabetes? Well, they are very similar to hyperglycemia because your patient's gonna have a high blood glucose level. So to help you remember the signs and symptoms, remember the three Ps. So the first P is polyphagia, and this is where they are constantly hungry. Then polydipsia. This is where they are very thirsty all the time. Then you have polyuria. This is where they have to urinate all the time. And then the S is for sugar in the urine. So whenever their urine is tested, it will have glucose in it. And some miscellaneous signs and symptoms would be like a fruity breath, they're hot and very dry, like dry mouth, along with urinary tract infections and yeast infections. Now let's wrap up this lecture and let's talk about the nurse's role in the treatment used to help treat a patient with gestational diabetes. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take everything that we have learned with patho and our role as a nurse and we're gonna put it in a mnemonic to help us keep this information straight. So remember the word sugar babe because we have a baby who is getting lots of sugar from mom. So S, screening for gestational diabetes. Most pregnant women will be screened for this at about 24 to 28 weeks gestation. And what they'll have to do, they'll have a one hour oral glucose tolerance test. And fasting is not required for this test. What they'll do is they'll come in and they will drink about a 50 gram a solution of glucose. And then one hour later, they will have their blood drawn and the result will come back and it will be abnormal if the glucose level is greater than 140 milligrams per deciliter. So if they have this, they will have to take the three hour oral glucose tolerance test. So they will, you know, do this on a different day. They won't do this on a the same day. And um, for this test, they will fast before it, and they wanna follow an unrestricted diet with carbs. So they will get their blood drawn at several different times with this one. One at fasting, then um, they'll drink the glucose solution, it's about a 100 gram solution. Then they'll have their blood drawn at one hour, then two hour, and then the three hour mark. And what they're looking for is if there's two or more abnormal results with their glucose. And if they have this, they are diagnosed with gestational diabetes. So what are those results? And you wanna be familiar with these results for each time that blood is drawn. So at fasting, an abnormal result would be greater than 95 milligrams per deciliter. At one hour, it'd be greater than 180. Two hours, it'd be greater than 155. And then at three hours, it would be greater than 140. And notice as time goes down from the one hour, the two hour, the three hour, that glucose level should be decreasing. Then U for use diet and exercise to manage blood glucose. This is usually what is ordered for women who have gestational diabetes to do because this can help keep that blood glucose within normal range. However, some patients may need insulin or oral medication like globuride. 
G for glucose monitoring. The pregnant mom would want to, on a daily basis, monitor her blood glucose at home. And a general rule of thumb, she would want her blood glucose during fasting periods where you know she hasn't had any food on her stomach for a while. It would need to be anywhere between 70 to 95 milligrams per deciliter. And then after she's had a meal, about one hour after a meal, you would want it to be less than 140 milligrams per deciliter, but of course, within that normal range greater than 70 because we don't want her to have hypoglycemia. A would be assess urine for glucose at the prenatal visits. We talked about this earlier because again, glucose starts to leak into the urine because there's too much in the blood. So another thing you'd want to do is ask her if there's any burning sensation with voiding. This could be a red flag that she might have a urinary tract infection and you would want to get a doctor's order and have her urine sent for your analysis to make sure she does not have an infection. R for risk factors for mama. So those risk factors that we went over earlier with that mnemonic, you definitely want to assess for at those prenatal visits to make sure that the woman is not at risk for gestational diabetes. B for blood glucose swings during and after labor. So during this time, you want to monitor the blood glucose levels very closely because we want to try to maintain euglycemic levels where they're about 70 to 130 because we want to decrease the baby's risk of getting hypoglycemia at birth. So we can maintain mom within a normal range. That can help baby whenever they're born and decrease their chances of having hypoglycemia. So during labor, sometimes um, the woman may have to have IV regular insulin or glucose to maintain those levels. So after labor, you wanna watch for in both baby and mom for hypoglycemia because remember gestational diabetes tends to disappear after birth. So watch the levels because they can go down. And for hypoglycemia in mom, you wanna be watching for sweating, feeling cold and clammy, like um, the little sentence, cold and clammy, give them some candy, give them hence some sugar. And in baby, you wanna watch um, out by checking their blood glucose levels. And sometimes they do need a oral glucose solution or some type of glucose solution to help with their levels. A for adverse effects of gestational diabetes. We talked about that in our patho discussion. And again, you're gonna be looking for preeclampsia, hypertension, protein in the urine, urinary tract infections, vaginal yeast infections, and um, she has a risk of C-section because of the large baby, preterm labor, and then the hypoglycemia and respiratory distress in the baby. B for blood glucose monitoring postpartum, and um, because she has such a high risk of developing type two diabetes after having gestational diabetes, it's recommended that at six to 12 weeks postpartum after delivery that she has um, a glucose test to look at that glucose level. And typically it's the two hour oral glucose tolerance test. And then lastly, E, educate her about the importance of regular diabetic testing due to her risk of developing type two diabetes. Again, what was that percentage? It was 50%. So even if her diabetes does disappear, everything goes back to normal. After the baby is delivered, there is still a risk. So you definitely wanna educate her about that. And typically they recommend um, being tested every one to three years. Okay, so that wraps up this review over gestational diabetes. And don't forget to access the free quiz that will test you on this content.